Hey Ollie, Ollie here has some separation anxiety. He is not a happy camper when mom leaves to go help other dogs. So uh, in this video, we're gonna go over how you can teach your dog to stay. Now, um, I just worked with a dog in Santa Monica the other day where they used a lot of harsh leash corrections. And they also uh, taught the dog to stay in a way that the dog got confused and thinking it can auto-release itself. When I teach a dog to stay, I teach for the three Ds. First for duration, up to five minutes where the dog's right here. Then for distance, then eventually for distractions. We wanna build a skill set and help the dog gain confidence and that skill set before we move on to the next step. So first what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, because we're gonna give them a lot of treats, I'm, gonna, I'm using the Tricky Trainers, I'm just gonna split these in half so we have a handful of them to give him for the first little section. Now I'm gonna use the word stay. If you have a dog, you've been trying to teach your dog how to stay and you've been saying stay and he doesn't stay, sometimes it's faster if that's the case to come up with a completely new command, maybe call it wait or hold. So, um, and he hasn't been taught to stay, correct? Mm -mm. Okay, so we're just gonna use the word stay. I wanna be kneeling so I'm closer and more proximate to the dog. I'm gonna have him sit, reward the sit, sit. Anytime you give a treat, the dog should hear the treat, uh, hear the word after the treat goes into their mouth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the treat between my thumb and forefinger here. I'm gonna keep it on my waist. I'm gonna give him a stop sign sign up with my hand. Now if, if he keeps on going for it, what I might do is go like this and hold it behind my back. Sit, stay. One, two, three, four, five. Stay. Next time I'm gonna try to go seven. Stay. Stay. Now what I'm doing is I'm saying stay as I achieve the apex of my movement with my hand. Then I turn my palm back towards my head and then I start counting. Now when you give him the treat matters. So if he's waiting to like 10 seconds, then we get to like nine seconds and then he turns his head and I start to give him the treat then, he thinks that turning the head is what got him the treat. So you wanna achieve at least two seconds of no movement before you give it to him. And sometimes I'll do something called a flash lure. If the dog's starting to move, sit, is I go like, just something real quick to keep him in place. All right, so let's try that again. Stay. Stay. Now the dog does not have to look at me the whole time because eventually I'm gonna leave the room. And so he can look anywhere he wants, he just can't move around. Now the book says the dog can go from an SIT to an LAY and back and forth. When I'm doing a sit, my book, I would like the dog to stay in a sit. If I put him in a sit, stay, I want him to stay in a sit. If he's a lay, uh, stay in a lay. However, if your dog always goes down to a lay, then just start out with a lay. Start out with whatever he likes to do easiest. Come here, buddy. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna keep doing this by small intervals until you get up to five minutes. Now, this is contrary to most dog training. Most dog training, you wanna do a 90 second maximum training segments. But this one, we need him to be able to stay so we can go to the bathroom or change some clothes or whatever it is. So we're gonna go very progressive. I would do this with about six to 12 treats. So each practice session is gonna be relatively short. Now when you're doing five seconds, 10 seconds, you won't even practice the whole minute and a half during initially. But eventually you can get to the point, keep track of where you were chewing, where you were before not chewing. But eventually you get to the point where if I'm going by fives this time, the next time I might go by uh, sevens, next time I might go by tens, uh, but go at your dog's pace. Now, if you go to like, if you go from 10 to 20 or go from fives to tens and then you go, you go from to at eight and the dog starts getting antsy, then back up and go by twos, you know, five to seven to nine or whatever it is. Go at your dog's pace. We want your dog to be, be successful at this, not get frustrated. If you get frustrated, your dog gets frustrated, make sure you stop before you get to that point. Don't try to muscle through because you have three more treats. If your dog's frustrated, stop. Always end on a good one. All right, now I'm gonna do two more and I'm gonna show you how we allow him to be released. I'm gonna use the word release, never use the word okay, it's a top 50 word. All right, stay. Stay, 15 seconds, I'm gonna to try to go to 20. Stay. Stay. 
I started counting on my hands because that was before uh, I was ready to give him the treat, but he wasn't looking at me. I waited for him to look back at me. Now we're done with the exercise. I'm going to release him. I'm going to go like this. Release. I'm going to toss a treat to the side and then release him. I'm not going to do him in between each, each treat at the end of the exercise. So this way he understands that I can only move away with enough repetition when I hear the word release. Now first we're going to do this until we get to five minutes of having the dog stay. This should be something that you practice multiple times a day in short practice sessions. I'd like to see you practicing with him at least three times a day for the next week to 10 days. Once you get to the point where you're at five minutes, come here buddy, then we can start doing it from a standing position. Come here, let's get a little bit further away so we can get both get in the shot. Come here. Sit. Stay. Now my formula is I take one step back, I would count to two, come back, stay. Stay. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, stay. Release. Now that's my formula to start off with. You don't always have to go by that. That's just my starting point. Some dogs you move faster and slower than others. So um, the idea is eventually you're gonna start moving away. Now you should be to the point where you're at least 15 feet away before you take the next step, which is moving yourself out of eyesight. Now when you move out of eyesight, that's gonna be a strong retractor for, or uh, attractor for your dog to come and find you. So if I'm like, if uh, sit, stay. Let's say there's a wall right here. So and I move back here, he can still see me, sit. He doesn't have to stay yet, obviously. I'm gonna take a step to the side. Now he can't see me, I count to one, come back, then go back to him, give him the treat. And then the next time I would move out of his line of sight for two seconds. And again, you're gonna change it up based on how well he performs. But at first, don't be gone for too long, because that's really hard now you are out of, out of line of sight. But eventually we wanna to get to the point where we can be outside of his line of sight for five minutes. And he stays seated. Um, I don't see one here, but a lot of people have a security camera. And so if you have one of those, you can watch it on your phone. That's great. If you go around the corner and look, watch on your phone or your iPad, you can see if he starts to get up out of the sit. If he does, back up a step. Don't practice, you know, if you're um, in a minute 30, practice in a minute 20 before you come back and do that. We usually like to say what I call five for five. I'd like the dog to do it five times in a row successfully, five different practice sessions before I move to the next one. For stay, that's a little bit five times in a row would be great, but five practice sessions would be a little bit overkill. So uh, just five times in a row, and then you move to the next iteration of whatever the duration is. The next one you wanna do is for uh, distractions. So because, um, you know, if you know things that he's distracting him by, then you wanna recreate those sounds. A lot of dogs barking is a big distractor. So if, if we do that, let's say we have a DVR here, and we record the dog whisper or something where there's a dog barking. Well, when we practice this, we practice the stay, but now we're doing it with the volume at maybe three. So he can hear it, but it's so, so quiet, it's not really strong. Each time we practice it, it should be a little bit higher, a little bit higher, to the point where it sounds like you have real dogs, it's like a dog kennel in here, and he's filtered it out. Now if there's other sounds like doorbell, or the, the leaf blower of the neighbor, or whatever it is, practice with all those things going on, so that we can get all those, get to, to ignore all those things and practice without, and stay without any interruption. Now, once you get to the point where you can do this, then this is where we can use the real world application for this. I can put him in a stay, get up and go get a drink of water and come back and then give him the release. I also use hand signals as well. This is usually I say release or break, uh, depending on what your word is. Um, and each time you do that, it should be, you should be longer, out of the room longer and longer. This is beneficial, I'll reward that crash, uh, because he's doing a job. So this helps him preoccupy his mind. And secondly, you're teaching him how to practice being alone. Because normally for dogs with separation anxiety, they freak out when we actually leave them. We go from 100% access to zero, like we talked about off camera. Well, for this, we're helping him practice just for a minute being alone. And not really fully being alone because we're in the house. And then eventually two minutes, three minutes, fine. Now the rule for dogs is once you can achieve two hours, they can go anything beyond that. They don't have to practice past that. I'm not saying you have to practice up to two hours for them, that would be quite a bit. Uh, but I think for him, because of his separation, I say, if we can just get him practice being in the room and not panicking, because right now he follows the guardian everywhere in the house. Anytime she gets up to do anything, even if she just gets up to go over there, he would follow her. So the more that he practices this, the better he's going to feel, and the world's not ending when my guardian's leaving. Matter of fact, she's not even leaving the house 99% of the time. Now, I wouldn't put him into a stay when we leave the house, because then he, he's going to eventually auto-release himself, and that's not healthy. But what we're doing with the state is just helping him practice being alone in the house for progressively longer and longer periods of time. 
This is how I can teach how you can teach your dog to stay.